grandma. I call my grandmother Gia. I call her Sookie. <laughs> grandma, okay. yeah, grandma. Uh, grandma. <laughs> Nana. I think she thinks that like Granny is like kind of cute. Like I think that's her like Jenny from the block like upgrade on Grandma. So only my sister and I call my grandmother Gia. It was like a Sookie now, you know. So she's Sookie to everybody. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. <laughs> I haven't really heard her talk much about her life and her experience. She instilled like mannerisms and being very poised and always putting your best foot forward. Because my grandmother is really sure about who she is. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Grandmother Project Presents Pearls and Pocketbooks, our live monthly interactive webinar experience featuring Black grandmothers and granddaughters discussing love, life, and everything in between. I am Melanie Brazil, and I am the creator of the Grandmother Project, an original nine-episode docuseries now available on YouTube. Simply go to youtube.com slash the grandmother project and you can catch out catch up with all prior episodes. The link will be in the chat. Y'all, season four of Pearls and Pocketbooks is already off to a great start. We kicked off last season speaking with an amazing grandmother, Africa Pace Brown, daughter of the legendary jazz and performing artist Oscar Brown Jr. Africa shared the importance of appreciating the skin you're in and how she continues to celebrate black culture in her art and in the continuation of her parents' legacies. Speaking of legacies, the women we are chatting with tonight are part of the fabric of Chicago's vibrant gospel music scene. That's right, we are chatting with not one, not two, but three generations about how they have leaned on each other, their faith, and what it means to share the gift of gospel music with each other. I am proud to present to you Pearls and Pocketbooks, episode 20, Dynasty. So our first guest, Mary Jenkins, is the daughter of the late Reverend James R. and Fanny Lewis. Her journey began on the West Side in 1955 at Mount Hebron Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of the late Reverend J.N. Wordlaw Sr. The Lord started dealing with her at an early age. In 1959, at the tender age of 13, she became directress over several of their choirs until 1969. Then in 1970, the Lord saw that there was a mighty work to be done on the south side of Chicago at Calvary Baptist Church under the leadership of the late Reverend C.R. Phillips. And he sent Mary. Now, 54 years later, and under the auspices of the Reverend Dr. James R. Flint Jr., she is still working with the music ministry at Calvary Baptist Church. Wow, what a journey. It is a pleasure to introduce you to Mary, Grandmother Jenkins. Grandmother, welcome. Thank you so much. Glad to be on tonight. You look lovely and I am really loving your pearls. Oh, thank you. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> so without further ado, I'd like to intro introduce you all to our next guest. Our next guest is the daughter of Mary Grandmother Jenkins and has a tremendous career that has spanned many genres over five decades, but most notably in gospel music. You might recognize her as the first runner up on BET's Sunday Best, hosted by Kirk Franklin, and from her appearance on BET's Celebration of Gospel, hosted by Steve Harvey. She performed at Carnegie Hall for the 1000th performance of the Gospel at Colonus, as well as performing on the national and world tour of that show. 
She is a stellar award-winning gospel artist and a Jeff award-winning actress who most recently appeared in Court Theater's hit production of The Gospel at Colonus alongside her daughter. She is the proud mother of four daughters, Lindsay, Jessica, Jillian, and Marley, and a loving wife to her husband, Louis, and a grandmother. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Sherry G. Ma Addison. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome, Miss Sherry. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, it's such a pleasure. You know, you're so humble that we often forget that you have such an impressive resume. Wow. Thank I you. I mean, you have just accomplished so much, and I can't wait for us to chat about it. And finally, for the third generation of excellence, we've got our next guest. Who, our next guest is the granddaughter of Mary Jenkins, the daughter of Sherry Addison, and a rising star in her own right. Performing since the tender age of six, she is an actress and singer based in Chicago. She's performed in crowd favorites like the other Cinderella at Black Ensemble Theater, Jesus Christ Superstar at Paramount, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and Women of Soul, both at the Mercury Theater. A woman of many talents, she has worked as an associate hair and wig designer and her work was recently showcased in Timeline Theater's Boulevard of Bold Dreams. She recently performed in Court Theater's production of The Gospel at Colonus and is currently performing in Elvis, Aloha from Vegas in Kansas, where she is joining us from this evening. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Jessica Brooks Seals. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What an entrance. Hello. What an amazing entrance. I'm so happy to see you. You look amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Those introductions, all three of them, they literally made me tear up. Oh wow. You all are, I mean, it's a it's a blessing. You all are are truly incredible. And we've gotten that already just from the bio. So as we can see, everybody, so you're visiting right now, Miss Sherry, huh? Yes, yes. I Yay! Get see my child, baby. That's right. <laughs> oh, well, it is so good to have you all on the show this evening. I just I, I just want to thank you because you all have been, it's been lovely putting this together with you over the past couple of weeks. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. <laughs> so, of course, you know, we're going to get started with you, grandmother. Okay. Because you're the original trailblazer here. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want you to take us back. Take us back in the day. What was it like for you growing up in your household back in the day as a little girl? Well, I came from a household of strict parents way back then where we couldn't dance. We couldn't listen to secular music. And everything was church, 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 church for breakfast, br church for lunch, <laughs> and church for dinner. <laughs> uh, how many of you all can relate to that? If you're in the chat, be sure to use our chat here if you're one of our guests. And tell us, is that something that you are familiar with? Because we've got a, an amazing audience out here. So be sure to give shout outs. And if that resonates with you, be sure to put that in the chat. So so it's it's apparent that from a young age, you know, church was was important to your to your family. Um, what did you what did you feel about that? Was that some was it something that you enjoyed or was it at that time? Was it something more that was required by your parents? At that time, it was something that was uh, required by my parents. Uh, and that time, children did not have a choice of whether we wanted to go to church or not. You had to go to church. So uh, it was not by choice. It was by force. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. You said you you knew where you were going to be on Sunday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and And Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and all the days in, in between. <laughs> That's right. And so we have got, we, we've heard that, you know, you actually, from your bio, you have actually been directing choirs from a young age. Can you tell us about that and how that came to be, how you discovered that, that gift? 
Well, uh, that gift uh, was discovered by uh, someone named Soraya Robinson. And she was over the young people at that time. And she saw that I had a gift. And actually, my gift was from God because I have not had any professional training at all. So that gift came from him. And I I don't I don't know. Um it's 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 hard to say. Um or shall I say it's it's easy to say. I don't I don't know which one I want to say, but uh when you belong to God and he has something for you to do, he puts it into you. And you don't have to worry about how it's going to come out. He will always work it out for you. So if he brings you to it, he'll bring you through it. Yeah. That is that is such um, good advice. You know, really it is. Because, um, you know, I'm sure that there are people watching that that have they're dreams that. that they're trying to accomplish. They have dreams that they're trying to accomplish. And so to hear that, you know, nothing can get away from your purpose. Okay. You know what? We um sometimes we have tech stuff. Uh Miss Jenkins, do me a favor and say say a few words. I want to make sure that your sound is okay on your end. Well, I'm calling from Chicago, Illinois. That's it. it. That's it. it. We're it's back in business. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Y'all, we, we think we are so grateful for this technology. And I mean, wow, technology, this is really a technological feat. So for all of you all watching, this is it's quite amazing what goes into to putting this together. And um, I have to give it to my guests because there are a lot of technical things that go into putting this together. And these guests have been amazing. So you were talking about that gift and we've got this lovely picture of you, a throwback photo from back in the day. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about this picture? <laughs> you know, as you get older, they say the first thing that goes is the mind. <laughs> so I am dressed for the prom. So I think that was probably in 1964. Yeah, dress for the prom. That's amazing. And at this time, you were, you know, if you're going to prom, you were currently, you have you currently had the responsibility of directing choirs. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know how I fitted it all in, but where there's a will, there is a way. So therefore, nothing went liking. You went to church, you went to rehearsal. It was not an option and you directed the choir and anything else that you had to do, you did that also. And you did it with a smile. <laughs> you know, that's key. And I, I find that that's a value that uh, a lot of elders, you know, value and that has been promoted. I know in my household, my mom always talks about being pleasant. If you're gonna do something, you have to have a good attitude about the way that you do it, right? And yeah. uh, that's something I'm still working on, by the way. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Jessica and uh, Miss Sherry, I think you're muted. There you go. I was saying, <laughs> me too. I'm still working on the always being pleasant part. <laughs> that's right. I think that's something that us as the younger generation can learn from the older generation is, you yeah. know, a lot of times they're doing things and they're doing it, not only are they doing it well, but they're doing it with grace. Yes. And that's the part that fills me with wonderment. So we've actually got another picture of you throwback uh, grandmother here that we'd like to get on. And tell us a little bit about this. Wow, that picture. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't even have that picture, so I don't know where it came from. I'm on there with my aunt, and my aunt is the only living aunt that I have left. She's in her 80s and she's a blessing. She's my mother's baby sister. And she has always been a support for me and still is a support. Oh, that's so lovely. And I'm so happy that we've had a chance to shout her out on the show this evening. Yes. So, you know, we, we, we know that you grew up in this household, the Value Church, and we know that you directed choirs from a young age. And then, you know, you became a mom. 
So it's often said that being a parent is, you know, one of these transformative experiences. So I've heard, as I'm not a parent yet, how did life sort of shift when you had this added responsibility of becoming a, a mom? Well, I was a single mom and I'm glad about it. In that day, normally you, if you're with child and not married, parents normally try to force you to get married. But I did not want to marry, so therefore I didn't. I was determined that I was going to raise my child on my own. And I want to say to Sherry and to each and every one of you, she is a gift from God. And I am thankful for her. She never gave me one ounce of problems. Never, never. Um, even if it's things that she wanted, she was just always sat, was satisfied with what she had. So therefore, I'm, I'm thanking and praising God for her today. And um, I said that my parents drug me to church. I drug her to church also because that's what was instilled in me. Although when I was young, I said that when I got older that I would not go to church or train up my child the way my parents trained me. But you see, I came out all right. So uh, though that good training back then helps uh, in today's age. And so uh, going to rehearsal, going to church, like you said, it was not an option. And Sherry started when she was about three years old. Uh, so where I went, she went. There was time that where she, as a little child, she and I would sing duets together. So it was it was a joy. And, and when I got older, I went to church on my own. Uh, I wasn't forced anymore. My Matter of fact, my father would tell me, Mary, you're in church too much. And now uh, that, 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 that was odd to me since he was the one that drug me to church. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, you know, and that, oh, what a, what a lovely family really. And, and to hear you say that, um, that, you know, that, that you knew what you wanted to do. You knew how you wanted to raise your kids and, you know, there are no regrets. And I, and I love that. And I know I, to follow up with that, I wanted to ask, you know, oh, I think it might have um, unmuted. There we go. What, okay. what role did faith play in your parenting style? Oh, faith uh, played a big role uh, because my parents uh, insisted that we go to church. Then I learned how to walk like Jesus. I learn how to talk like Jesus. And that was by going to church, by going to Sunday school to learn about the man that died for me. So uh, therefore, uh, it was just a, a wonderful thing. This technology is strange because my computer keeps doing something. Can you hear me clearly? We can. Okay. Okay. We can. Great. I Great. think I might have, um, is it better now on your end? Yes. Okay. Yes. I can hear you. Did I answer oh, your question? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. You surely did. I mean, and you <laughs> talked about how faith guided your parenting style, and that's so yes. important. Yes. You know, it's. And, uh, it's can, I, can I just say this real quick? Uh, uh, because I was young and uh, started in the church young, I really believed in God and had faith and believed that He would do what I was being taught that he would do. I want to tell this little story real quick. Um, my brother, I had to take him to school. We were young in grade school. My parents told me, don't play around. Uh, take him to school, get him enrolled in school and come home. And of course, yes, ma'am. But me as being a child, I decided to play around anyway. And I lost his birth certificate. And I just knew I was going to get it when I went home. And I prayed like I never prayed before. And someone from the school called and said that they had found my brother's birth certificate. It was in the office. And from that day forward, as a young child in about third grade, I never doubted God again. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
You said I pray like I never prayed I, before because you knew what the consequence was going to be, huh? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, so moving, you know, moving into to your your ministry with the with the choir. You know, the church choirs where many singers, myself included, that's the that's the space where you first sing in public for the first time, and it's a place of nurturing. Um, because that's where you can grow in a safe space. What has been the most fulfilling part for you of being a choir director? The most fulfilling part for me has been that uh, from directing the choir, first of all, I lived the life that I was talking about and singing about. And I am so proud today that has been so many that have come through Calvary Baptist Church and they have gone out on their own and some are pastors, um, teachers, lawyers, and that has truly, you can, you, you name it. And then they have come out of the choir and I'm thankful and praising God today for that. And some of those same people has kept in contact with me and still seeing about me today. Well, I think this is a good time to acknowledge the chat where we've got people that are blowing up the chat. We've got Stephanie McKinney who says, I love you all family. Belinda Collins is in the building. Love them. They were the best. Um, Thursday Flint says that they are checking in from Calvary Baptist Church. Love these ladies and their powerful ministry. Oh goodness. We've got so many. Terry Lewis. I went to... <laughs> this is a funny one. I went to church so much as a child that I told myself that when I became grown, I wasn't going anywhere. I lied. I enjoy attending church now and I don't like to miss it at all. Sandra Jones Thompson Thomas says there is only one Mary Jenkins and we love her. Viola <laughs> Davis checking in from Calvary Baptist Church. These three women are the best. Nicole Lewis, beautiful fam. Hey, babes. Hey, we've got your family on here who says, Jillian Rhodes, who's chopping onions? This is just beautiful. My family, I love you all. <laughs> Angela Burt, it is such a joy watching this. I love these three dearly. And then, hey mom, Cassandra Brazil says, I can relate. My sisters and I spent weekends in Gary, Indiana with our maternal grandparents. We were in church from Sunday school through church and on Sunday evenings, there was always some church choirs concerts. Those were the good old days. Antoinette Anderson, beautiful ladies. Patrice Covington, the talent, the beauty, the class. Love you, Jessica. Hey, Patrice. Uh, Stephanie, Hannah, love you, family, and Katrina Lewis. So I just wanted to let you know how much, and Vashawn Lee, and we'll get back to the chat. Thank you all, for, first of all, for watching and participating in this chat and letting these ladies know how much they are loved because we really do feel honored to have you all on here. And so this is a perfect segue because... For those of you that don't know, we're gonna get a video queued up. And that's a wonderful throwback picture. Look at you too. Hey, Mary Jenkins and uh, Miss Sherry. We're gonna get a video queued up so that people can see just what we're talking about when we talk about how you are a legendary choir director. So give us a few minutes to get that video up because I want everybody to check this out for themselves. I was moved. And I had to put my gospel on today because I said, this is a gift, okay? <laughs> All right, here we go, y'all. Oh, no, it's, um, it's a directing video. Mm -hmm. But we'll go to this one a little bit later. Yes, it should be. Uh, let me know if you, uh, if you need it. You can send me a message if, you, if we need to cue that back up. So in the meantime, actually, while we're getting that ready, Miss Sherry and Jessica, let's have y'all come off on mute. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> yes. So, Miss Sherry, you know, we heard from your mom and we heard about how she grew up. What was it sort of like with you growing up in your mom's household? What was that like? Um, there is nobody like my mom. God, he designed her specifically for me. And by that, what I mean is anything that you see come out of me, it came from my mom. Um yeah. We always talk about this, me and my daughters, like, it's like my grandmother's the tree and, and, and you were in there and we were in there and all these pieces that come out. My mother always instilled in us 
do it like it's your last time for it just might be i don't know <laughs> so i'm sure there were some people in the background saying that statement with me so that has become even a work ethic my mother uh, what i know of my mom she grew up artsy she had arts in her even though it was church but she had arts in her still and you can have more than one gifting. My mother would draw. My mother modeled and had me in fashion shows with her as a little girl. And uh, she would stand me up on a box, you know, at the church and have me sing. I would just be crying and then, you know, because look, and, and I guess I handed that trait down to my child, but that's one of those things that it, it all came out of my mom. It all came out of my mom. Anything that I've done, she's been the the like the song say the wind beneath my wing you know she was the one that pushed me you know when I wouldn't push myself my mother is always there pushing all of us her grandchildren her children my mom always have pom-poms out you know and I guess she just wants to process uh the arts that's in her and so that's her tree bearing fruit and that's what I see through this family. It's, it's an amazing thing. What a beautiful, beautiful metaphor, if you will, that this tree, and it's still blooming, and look at the fruit that has started, and, and look at how you all are thriving. It's really just beautiful. And you brought up something that, that brought up good memories for me. You talked about the church fashion shows. Now, I don't know how many of y'all out there went to a church that had a fashion show, y'all. But I don't know if that was a Chicago thing or what. But that was the event that I look forward to the most. And we have got a picture. If we can get that queued up, it might take us a few minutes. We've got a picture from the church fashion show that you all sent in. But I mean, if you if you grew up with the church that had church fashion shows, can you please say something in the chat? <laughs> that is the first place where you can learn how to model and see the latest fashion. So we've got a picture. Oh, yep. I think it's coming up right here. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's enlarge this. We got to make this one a full screen here. Okay. <laughs> Give us a second here. We're going to get this full screen for you. Look at this. Look at Mary Grandmother Jenkins at the church fashion show. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so can you tell us about this, grandmother? <laughs> I don't remember too much about that. You know, um, I didn't have a bashful bone in my body when it came to modeling <laughs> or doing. So, um, still doesn't. I just enjoyed it. I I enjoyed life, and I still enjoy life today. And. Uh, Whatever I did, I always tried to find the good in it. Even when it wasn't good news, I still tried to find the good in it. And that's those are words to live by. And I'm telling you, we need to bring those bell bottoms back because you were <laughs> rocking those, okay? I don't know if, how many of you all knew that uh, Mary Jenkins was a model back in the day, but you were wearing that outfit, okay? <laughs> bring those bell bottoms back. So, you know, um, we actually were able to pull up that video for those of you that maybe have not experienced the directing prowess of Mary Jenkins. We have got a very special video that we'd like to pull up. And this just, this shows it all right here. So we're going to pull up you directing. Oh. 
Tudo. Yes. Yes. If that didn't just move you, I don't know what will. You were directing that choir. That is a gift. That is a gift. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing, grandmother. I'm not sure if, um, uh oh, hopefully we didn't lose the sound there. But we've got some people saying here in the chat, my grandmother had us in every church fashion show. She called it modeling. We always got to wear the pretty new dresses. My first modeling experience was at church. Latosha Walker says, I have loved this family since the first time we met. Genuineness at its best. Cedric hey, Mays. Wow. Hey, Tassie, we love you. Hey, Thank Ty. you. Yeah, shout out. Grandmother, is your sound still working over there? Okay. It wasn't. I just got it back now. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? We can hear you. If you want, um, okay, I'm not sure if the phone, if your phone sound, did it go out? Okay. We can hear you. It's a little bit of a delay, but we can hear you. Yes, it did. Okay. Okay. All right. And if you want, if you, um, if you're able to connect back on your phone, we can we can work it out, but don't worry about it because we can still hear you and we can still see you. But we're gonna go on to talking about Miss Sherry because okay. you know you've carried on the legacy, and of course you know it's easy to see where you got it from. How did your mom shape you as a singer and a performer? My mother didn't take no for an answer. <laughs> That's one of those things. <laughs> she said it was instilled in her. You went and you didn't have a choice. Well, I went and learned to love it, you know, and she would, like I said, she would always push me. She would always boost me. She would always encourage me when I didn't have it for myself, you know, and that still happens to this day. You know, my mom will talk me uh, she's taught me into a lot of things that have been a blessing through the years for my career. Wow. And we've got a wonderful picture here of you from back in the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get ready. Yes. Tell, can you tell us about this photo? Yes. This was actually at Calvary, the, the old church, 8201 South Jeffrey, out in front. And it was my mom's. Uh, she was getting married that day. She was, yep. She was getting married to Charlie Jenkins, my daddy. I love him, miss him. Oh, wow. What a beautiful, beautiful picture. Thank you. That thin girl is still in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have accomplished so much as we've heard, you know, from your resume. And there has been this piece, I don't know if you all are familiar out there, the Gospel at Colonus. And this, you've had a long journey with this show. Can you tell us about this show and how you became involved in that journey? Um, there is something called the circle of life. I worked at WTTW uh, Chicago, Channel 11, the window to the world. And I worked for the director of broadcasting who put on the shows. And because she didn't know anything about gospel, but she knew I did, she asked me to screen the show with her and let her know where it should go in the schedule. And so when I screened it, it's like, oh, this show is amazing. It had Clarence Fountain and the Five Blind Boys of Alabama, the Soul Stirrers, the Institutional Radio Choir, Carolyn Johnson White, Willie Rogers. It was just a, a, a myriad of amazing talent. And so I was like, oh yes, you've got to air this. And then I need a recording of it so that we can watch it or we can also DVR, well, not DVR, record it on our VCR back in the day, and uh, we would have watch parties for the Gospel at Colonus. And fast forward to a few years later in 1990, uh, I was actually pregnant with Jessica 
and Colonus came to Chicago at the Goodman Theater and they asked, they were holding auditions. Well, my mother told me about it, but I wasn't going. I didn't have a resume. I didn't have a headshot. You know, so yeah, that, that was my alibi and I was sticking to it. And my mother was like, you go and you let them tell you what you don't have. And I was like, yes, ma'am. So I went because my mom told me to go. And then I went on the audition. Whoo, they was like, thank you. I left. It was great. So I did what my mama told me to do. And I thought I was off the hook. And they would call me back. Okay, we want you to meet the director. Oh, okay, so I went back, met the director. And then they was like, thank you. You left. And then they would call me back and say, I want you to meet the musical director. And so this process, and I was like, why do these people keep calling me? They must not know I have conflicts because I'm six months pregnant. How am I going to do a show for three months? <clears throat> and I guess they were all into that because they had had people in the show prior to that being pregnant. So uh, full circle moment, I ended up being in that show. The director, of bro uh, the vice president for broadcasting who was my boss's boss, told me, Sherry, I feel like if you don't take this job, uh, he said, you can always get a job typing. You're good at that. You can do all this administrative stuff. But I feel like if you don't pursue this opportunity, because the Goodman Theater is a really big deal, he said, I think you'll be kicking yourself for the rest of your life. And I'm so grateful that I, I went on and took the job six months pregnant and did the show where Jessica got her start on stage in the womb and was born. We almost made it to closing. We made it to that Friday. Sun closing was that Sunday, but she was born that Friday. Hey, and and so now, you know, now I see where she getting up. Fruit. Wow. And we have got, look at that. Look at baby Jessica, your <laughs> yeah. stage debut. Yeah, that, that was six weeks after having her and I was in San Francisco. And I didn't know how I was going to go with a baby, but they asked me to go. I knew I had to go. And the dressers actually made her a costume in our closing show. They brought her out on stage. Did you all catch that? She said at six weeks, she was, <laughs> when six weeks after she had a baby, she was back on stage. Oh, that three. is amazing. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Jessica, do you remember that? <laughs> what was I it like? Wish, I wish I did. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know if you all know this, but then here we are, all these many years later, the two of you actually got to do this show together. Yeah. We did. And we we've did. got a photo. Look at that. So what was it like working with each other? What was it like for you, Jessica, working with your mom in this in this show in particular? It was wonderful. It was wonderful. A full circle moment. Um, I had a wonderful time, but I am a very protective person over the people that I love. So in a work environment with my mom, I'm extremely protective. So initially, it was difficult for me but then it got really easy because the directors were amazing and they took great care of my mom. So we were both able to work and just have a wonderful time. It was so wonderful to look over there and see my mother. Like wow. there were certain moments that I intentionally looked at her during that show and just took it all in. It was beautiful. Wow. And you all got a chance to take that show to California, right? We did. Yeah, we did. We got to go to California and perform at the Getty Villa Museum this past summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my mommy came. She did. She's our biggest supporter. She She's is. always there to promote us, to uplift us, to encourage us and just cheer us on. Oh, and that is, that that for is granted. you know, we don't take that for granted. That is such a blessing to have support in this industry, especially you need it. You absolutely do. And I know all my performers out there know how much we lean on our families, especially in this career. It's it's really just a, it's a team sport. As much as it feels like you're doing it by yourself sometimes, as a performer, you're constantly, you need people to help you read lines with you. You need people to help you practice. You need people to come support the work. You have coaches and all of these types of things. And so, you know, but the support, there's nothing like having your family. Yeah, so, and, and if 
I can just interject one thing right here, even traveling and doing all those other things. I had Jessica with me, but I didn't have Lindsay with me. My mother was always there picking it up. You know, she was the chief cook and bottle wash. You know, she was taking care of the girls when I was on the road trying to do this thing, you know, called entertainment, you know? And so, like I said, it always keeps coming back to my mom. She's always there somewhere in it, pushing us to be great to our greatness, you know? And while my mom was on the road and out of town working, grandmother, a few years later, had us in music lessons. So we took piano and my sister was learning how to play the bass guitar. And I used to have to um, learn drums. And we had a math tutor, uh, Thomas Johnson, Professor Thomas Johnson. He would tutor me and my sister in math before we would do piano. So grandmother really did push us. Mm -hmm. She really did. And look, a funny story. My mom came home and we were all like, oh, we don't want to do it anymore. We don't want to, you know, play these instruments. And my mom said, well, mom, they don't want to do it. And my grandmother said, Sherry, they're too young. You're giving them too many options. And now my sisters and I, one of our biggest regrets is that we did not stick with those lessons. We could have been playing beyond Beyonce like the mamas. <laughs> 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 we did we didn't stick with that but she was always pushing us mm -hmm. and it's we still working it yes and you know uh listen those music lessons I, I i too am somebody that was uh sort of put into piano lessons and after a while i begged to get out and now i go oh man melanie you could have been alicia keys out here yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But, but you know what? We're grateful because the foundation is still there. So yes. if I do get a piece of music, I'm able to actually plunk out my part. And I'm so grateful. Shout out to my first piano teacher, Mrs. Brooks, who was also my family's piano teacher. I used to go to Mrs. Brooks' house and have to play that piano. And, um, you know, just all of these things. But we were so grateful for these people, our elders, people like grandmother who invest in us and can see things that we can't always see, right? And so, yeah. of course, you know, you all are just so uh, captivating. There's so much to talk about. We've got to talk about Miss Sherry, though. Oh, and this is a wonderful picture. This is when um, I think the picture, these are both pictures celebrating the Gospel of Colonus, right? Can you tell us a little bit about these? Yeah. Uh -oh. Yes. We uh, The Gospel of Colonus, we won a Jeff Award. Mm -hmm. uh, this this year yeah last, this past this past uh october we won the jeff award and so that's our director mark hood we love you mark, we love you, mark. mark. uh but yes that was us at the jeff awards and i was holding the jeff look at me yucky, yucky, yucky. Yes. <laughs> and then this is um after closing no opening that was that was opening, opening night party i believe yes that was the opening night party in la in la at the getty villa and you can see my mom is there supporting wow. always supporting just amazing always. out in that audience and everybody knew grandmother charlie actually our our direct one of our directors for Kelowna. he charles actually newell. charles newell he actually looked at me one day and said can i call her grandmother and i was like absolutely everybody does <laughs> Oh, we've got a comment in the chat. Patrice says, I don't even have kids yet, but when I get me some grandkids, they are for sure going to call me grandmother because that is rich. <laughs> yeah. They're going to put some respect. That's right. Oh, I know that's right. And so, Miss Sherry, you know, a lot of us know you from my first exposure to you was when you were on Sunday's Best. Can Yay. you briefly tell us, tell us about that. How did you become, how did you go from singing in church to winding up on BET Sunday Best in front of all of gospel's great artists. That is a crazy thing. Um, it was one of those things, you know, what people don't know about this industry is it really has ups. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And so sometimes there's no middle ground. And I was in a dry place. You know, that's, that's how I felt. Like I was in a dry place. And it was a Sunday morning and I was literally talking out loud to God. And I was like, Lord, when are you going to have something 
for people who just want to sing gospel. And I kid you not, I was coming out of the shower and as I was walking in my bedroom, TV, Bobby Jones gospel was on, on a Sunday morning. And the commercial came on and said, so you think you can sing gospel music? And I was like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. He talking like that, <laughs> you know? And so I actually called my cousin Heather and I was like, Heather, I need you. All I know is the commercial said, you think you can sing gospel music and I need to find out where it is because they're holding auditions here. She did the leg work for me. Um, and I went, did the audition down at uh, McCormick Place. And, and then see, and it's so funny. Backstory, my mother is even in that. If you go to McCormick Place down there on 22nd Street, my mother's name is on the wall because with all of the contractors who worked on the project. My mother worked on that project to build McCormick Place down there on 22nd Street. Mm -hmm. So my mom's name is on the wall down there. Um, but that was where the audition was for Sunday Best. Went through all the different rounds and then they told me, no, we can't see you singing outside the four walls of the church. But God gave me favor with the producers. They call me back as the wild card. And I went to all the different shows and, you know, it was just, it was an amazing experience. Um, because we were the first. And so I'm really excited about that to know that we were the uh, pilot for Sunday Best. Mm -hmm. And not only were you on the show, you went all the way. Yes. You were in the final, the final, two. it came down to you and one of the contestants. That is huge. And I can tell you, Chicago was rooting for you. The fact that you were from Chicago, I will never forget watching that show. And I had the honor, you know, you talk about these full circle moments. Who knew that we would have eventually worked together at Crowns and yeah. Goodman? So it's yep. just really something how how you don't really know the future. You yep. know, you don't really know where you're going to end up or how things are going to work out. We do want to put a quick clip up of you on Sunday Best because how could we not? We need people need to know exactly what we talk about when we talk about how amazing your voice is. So we're going to check that out briefly. It could be somebody in this room that needs ministering to let me go to where I know to go. Somebody ought to testify. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nelly, we don't think oh, it. Scary. You better sing. Can she hear us? Mm -hmm. no. Nelly, we don't see it. Oh, could you not see the clip? Did you all see it out there? We did it, the audience, can you put it in the chat? Were you able to see that clip? Okay, you were able. They said they saw it. Okay, well, good. Good. you're gonna <laughs> have to good. take our word for it. <laughs> Minister to us. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know, um Miss Sherry has a versatile voice. So on that clip, you just heard her going to church. But I have been in things where I have heard Miss Sherry sing operatic notes. She can sing legit. I don't think there's anything that she can't sing. And it is really just amazing. So you are definitely not a one trick pony. You have a, such a gift and anyone that's ever worked with you really understands that, you yeah. know? You. Yes, I, I, it's, it's a pleasure to just be able to, to acknowledge that today. So as we start to wrap up, can you believe that we're almost done with this? You all are so interesting that we could just keep going. But as we start to wrap up, Jessica, I wanna loop you in a little bit more. And I wanna ask you, you know, with these greats, you, you have your grandmother, you have your mom. Have Do you feel a sense of pressure to, to fill these big shoes? Or how does it feel to have these women ahead of you? I did feel pressure that I put on myself because my mother and my grandmother always pushed me to uh, chart my own path and go my own way and to embrace my sound and the way I did things. They were very supportive of that. But because my mom is so great and so wonderful vocally, and because my grandmother is so wonderful, I always um, compared myself, but it wasn't because of them. 
it was me. But now I am okay with my voice. I'm okay with the way I perform and the way I do things. And I love it so much. And it's a blessing to have such a wonderful example. Yes. So it is, it is. And I love, I actually love when people say I look like my mom or they compare me to my mom. But my favorite one is when people say I look like my grandmother or when, that I act like my grandmother. She says she doesn't see it, but I do. I act like you, grandmother. <laughs> Miss Jenkins, are you able to hear us over there? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we've got, we're just going to show some, some throwback photos because some of these are just so I'm, precious. Sound is going in. Oh, her sound is going in and out. Ooh, that's so these are some, some good memories. Yeah. Tell us about some of these photos. Uh, the first one i believe it's on the left for everybody where i have on the orange dress and my mom has on a den denim jacket that's us holding the tony award at tony award winning court theater that we just did the gospel at colonis um with and then these other pictures are me and my mom when i was a kid and then me and grandmother just around the house me and my onesie <laughs> and then my mom and i at the park mm -hmm. at the top and then grandmother and me and our cousin, well, my cousin, Look, and Billy's I'm, birthday party, and my mom is photo bombing, peeking her head out in the back. I Just see there family memories. These are amazing memories. And we'll, as we go through the rest of the slides, I want to, as we start to wrap up, oh, wow, this is, talk about a stunning family photo. Y'all are sharp in this. Thank sharp. You. you know, so if you could describe your grandmother in one word, what would mm -hmm. it be? unique for me unique my mother is oh it's just hard to put it all in one but she is unique she is unique there's nobody like my mother my one word would be lo loving i would say loving that encompasses it all to me she is loving she will give Ooh. to you she shares with people she's forgiving mm -hmm. she is kind she um she's very generous i would just say loving unique is it but at the core loving is love when i say unique my mom is genuine oh yeah that her uniqueness is genuine there is nobody like mary jenkins my mama is, is look at that that's my mama she's regal she's all of that she's gonna give you her best um she doesn't have two faces mm -mm. You're going to get what you're going to get. Anytime. Neither do you. It's the same. For you. Ah. you don't have two faces either. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I was telling Melanie um, when we spoke earlier mm -hmm. this week or last week is that my mom and my grandmother, they don't switch up She's consistent. from church to home to work. You know, of course, there are is levels to it, but just the core of who they are, loving God, fearing women, that's who they are everywhere they go. And I'm very, very proud of that. And yeah, I am. And that says something, right? Because you, you, you all have said this and that being genuine and, and Miss Sherry, both you and Jessica have said, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this show is all about. It's about celebrating our grandmothers and so that the world can know, because we hear about all these heroes and these celebrities, but the people that really have the impact are right here in our family. It's mm -hmm. you, Mary Jenkins. It's you, Sherry Addison. It's you, Just. It is our families. These are the people that we need to be celebrating. And that's what this show is about. I hope you all have, have felt that. Before we wrap up, because, because you all are sort of like celebrity guests, I'm gonna let us go over just a little bit because, because you know, we don't always get this all the time, right? So um, we do have a tribute video because we did not want to leave your sisters out. So we want to put this on, um, briefly we're going to share this video and then we actually have some questions that people sent in from the audience that we want to make sure we get out but first we'll check out this beautiful video hi grandmother i just want to say that you are the first daughter of the first daughter my mother is your first daughter and i'm her first daughter i am so blessed to have come from your lineage you are the epitome of godliness and grace the boys and I love you. 
Say hi, Luca. Hi, grandmother. I just wanted to say that I love you so much. I've always admired you for your elegance, your poise, your ability to support so many different people and still be there as a huge support and inspiration to all of your family and your children and grandchildren. And I just love you and I appreciate you so much. Hello, yes. grandmother. It's your granddaughter, Marley. And I was just making this video to tell you how much I love you and appreciate you. Thank you for always supporting me through all of my endeavors, no matter what I do. And thank you just for being a rock for our family. We love and appreciate you so much. That was incredible. Thank you so much for putting those together, ladies. Shouts out to you. You are so loved, grandmother, and I hope you feel that today. Chastity Keys is, has said great job all the way from Ghana. So we are worldwide yeah. this evening. Hello. Oh, my goodness. This is fantastic. Stephanie McKinney. Then she proceeded to have church. Jillian Rhodes again. Classical phenomenal moment. So everybody has, I mean, so many amazing comments. Nicole um, Lewis here. And Katrina, hi Katrina, I love you all so. And so we're gonna take a few questions that have been already sent in from the audience. One of them is from Jada Lawrence who wanted to know, how do you maintain your voice? Uh-oh, I think they went away here. Who's the question for? I, I Whoever wants to jump at that because you all are all, you know, singers. So. Um, I don't know. We, I think we might have actually lost. Um, let's see here. Oh, there they are. Yay, you're back. back. Okay, you're back. All right. Make sure your video is on. I don't see your video yet. You don't see us? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. I, see, I see us and let's see. Oh, no, I don't want to share my screen now. Oh, there you are. There you are. You're back. You're perfect. Okay. okay. So briefly, can you tell us how do you maintain your voice? Uh, first, I want to quickly say Jada Lawrence is my first cousin. That's another granddaughter of grandmother. Hi. Yes. Oh, so that's another granddaughter. Yes, that's grandmother's granddaughter, Jada. Um, I can say how I maintain my voice. Mm -hmm. Because I have a raspier, huskier, lower voice, it is very sensitive. So I maintain by drinking a lot of water and getting a lot of sleep. I know that sounds funny, but I have to sleep in order to uh, keep up my voice. And I try to stay away from dairy because it clogs me up. So a lot of water is um, the least amount of dairy as possible and a lot of rest and sleep. That's for me. And I never followed the rules of don't do dairy and don't you know do anything cold and blah, 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 blah. But I did follow the rule of Mary Jenkins and you rest, you rest. You're not doing nothing crazy right before a big event. You had to bring it down, you know, just chill. And and rest is so key. It has helped me in every area. Sunday best, when contestants were getting hoarse, I was going in and resting. They were trying to go out after, you know, shows and stuff. And so that very thing was, and I could see it. It was like rest. It, 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 they're not resting. And that made the difference. So rest. For me, it's a huge sacrifice, but rest rest and good diet as possible as much as possible well you have heard it here first y'all i just want to say thank you so much for joining me grandmother thank you miss sherry addison and jessica thank you this has been just so inspiring to to hear about and to see how you all have not only just talked about it but you've lived it and it's and i hope that it's inspired somebody out there to know that Anything is possible and you never really know how God is working. You know, you all are really a testament to the power of faith and family. So thank you so much for joining me this evening. And I want to say thank you. Yes. Thank you, Melanie, for following your gift and allowing your platform to be a blessing to us. Yeah. To our family because I uh, feel choky. Um, because it's just my mother always says giving them their flowers while they may live. And while they can yet smell them, she says, it's not going to do me any good when I lay stretched across the front for you to tell me how much I was worth. And so, Mama, you're valuable to all of us who have had the honor 
of coming in your path. And mama, you're valuable. Ah, the same that's way right. you just And I also want to say thank you, Melanie. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank every single person that tuned in, yes. that we we text, we posted. Yes. I want to thank you for every ticket you bought, yes. every flight oh, you goodness. bought, yeah. that to come and visit us wherever we are. Y'all always come and support. travel and you support that's us. Great. And we may not be able to say it enough, but thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate every it. comment. Thank yeah. you. That's right. And I love it. And, and I got to give my thank yous, right? I got to thank my cousin, Cece Hester, for, for loaning us equipment for tonight. Um, I want to c- uh, thank my cousin, Zeke Hester, who's been doing the engineering and making sure that these slides are up in the videos. I got to thank my parents, Cassandra and Thomas Brazil, just for literally everything. Um, Paris Nesbitt, I want to thank all of you out there for tuning in. Thank you so much. This is a labor of love. This is a passion project, and it is only possible because of you all's support. And so many of you have asked how you can support the Grandmother Project. Well, you can subscribe to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash the Grandmother Project, and follow us on Instagram. And if you stay tuned, we have a very special video of how you can donate because this is something that we like to put together and we want to put it continue to be able to bring you high quality programming through this platform to the best of our ability and so i thank you all for tuning in grandmother i thank you is there anything else you want to say grandmother before we before we sign off i know we have a bit of a delay but we can wait before you sign off i would like to thank you and I would like to thank each and everyone who tuned in. And for those of you who's yet given me my flowers while I live, God bless each and every one more abundantly. Thank you so much. Y'all stay tuned for our outro video. Thank you for sticking with us this evening. This has been another episode of the Grandmother Project presents Pearls and Pocketbooks. Thank you all. We'll see you next month easy. Simply go to www.grandmotherprojectseries.com and click donate. You'll be directed to our PayPal page where you can enter an amount to help support the creation of new episodes and content. Be sure to like and subscribe to our page on YouTube and follow us on social media. See you next month on the next Pearls and Pocketbooks.